the secret <clears throat> takes about 10 seconds to learn. And the secret is just simply giving the other the love that you really want. So how do you get the love that you really desire? What, what can someone do to uh, attract the person that they're really looking for, particularly if someone's single and they're looking for that perfect mate? You know, um, I think um, most couples come in and they complain about the other person. <laughs> and uh, I think that it has a lot to do with how you feel about yourself, because you really don't accept who you are and you don't even like or love who you are. I, don't, I think it will be very difficult to love somebody else. And I think that it's a big myth in our society that we expect somebody else to complete me, like in the movie, right? And I think, again, the media and all our contextual culture tell us that we need somebody else in order for us to feel loved or to feel fulfilled in the relationship. So I think for that, to answer that question, it'll be very important to examine yourself. You know, who am, am I? Uh, am I really accepting that where I came from? You know, maybe I need to come to terms with certain in my, things in my past or develop in other areas and then when I feel so better and fulfilled about myself through relationships you know with others I can really expect somebody to share my happiness rather than make me happy which is I think almost impossible. Yeah, Just what you're saying Sue makes so much sense and we put so much expectation on the other uh, it's actually an expectation that the other just it's impossible for them to live up to and so you know the, the I think the secret <clears throat> takes about 10 seconds to learn and the secret is just simply giving the other the love that you really want Wow or being nice. being the love that you want to get it takes 10 seconds to teach that but it takes a lifetime to master <laughs> yeah true and that's the true. journey and if, and if two people, when, when they partner together, can each be actual partners? And my dedication to the relationship is to try to be the love that I want. And my partner also takes that same commitment to the relationship. Now we've got a lifetime journey of figuring out um, how to give. And by giving, we automatically receive the yeah. love that we want. Yeah, I'd just like to, to um, follow that with the, the, the myth that I think in the culture is that you can love yourself into being a loving person. Mm -hmm. I think what we're discovering with couples is that is exactly when, when getting the love you want was titled, um, the, um, the, title, op, the operating title was different and the marketing on it was, well, you'll probably sell 10 copies. The book is about giving the love your partner wants, not about getting the love you need. It's been false and she said, advertising. Well, <laughs> All this time. They'll You've discover, they'll discover when they read it what the, what the purpose is. So what, what we've learned is, is really countercultural, that when you move into a relational model of understanding human beings and out of the individual model, that one of the things that slowly begins to evolve is that that you experience exactly what you said, and there's a neurochemistry for it and a neurology out, begin to experience what you do to other people. And if you love them, you experience the love. If you hate them, you experience the hate. So that the way to love yourself is to love another person unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to do that, you change your own neurology, you change your chemistry, and you begin to feel, because there's a part of the brain that is not object related. It's it's only self-related. But that part of the brain receives the cortical energy that's put out as if it were directed at the self. Right, so right. the self-love arises out of the other love. I love the way each of us is throwing out ideas about how to get the love you want. Mm -hmm. And my contribution would be we are hurt by the past and we're struggling with the present. The more we can invite our couples to image the future and vision the future. Harville and I talk about how important it is for all of us to um, know that the present isn't perfect, but if we can co-create the future together, it moves us into a different part of the brain. And, um, and as people begin to 
then take steps at a time. It's a partnership that will help them move into getting the love they want. I think that's the intentionality piece, the conscious piece. Your original yeah. book title, yeah, 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 is Being around having that shared vision for the future mm -hmm. as a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we, as a society, as a culture, put way too much stock in the notion of love. And I tell my patients when they come in the door, love schmuv. We're going to talk <laughs> about goodwill and <laughs> positive regard and respect. That's an achievement with Kindness, a lot of couples right? that come to Because goodwill. I'm more interested in do you like each other than do you love each other. Mm -hmm. And I do, uh, the big focus around my work is how do you treat each other? Mm -hmm. Do you look forward to seeing each other? Right. Do, you, do you think each other is an interesting person? These things I think are much more relevant on a day-to-day -day basis than whether you love someone. Because love is an ideal. Love means different things to me than it does to you and than it does to you. And so I just kind of throw that out right off the bat. And then we talk about what's important, what are your values, what's meaningful to you. And those are the, the ingredients that help people connect and have good sex. I really want you to hear the message from all of these experts that you too can change your relationship one right. conversation at a time and that it is possible for all of us to change the world one relationship at a time.